This is Tesso again from Uragon Channel. So ngayong araw, papakita ko sa inyo yung buhay ko as an IC nurse dito sa Sydney. So it's uh, half past five in the afternoon. Um, nakatira ako sa my west. So I'll be working somewhere in the city area. So yun, magdadrive pa ako ng isang oras. And uh, yung work natin is 12 hours. So just to give you a glimpse kung ano yung buhay namin dito sa Australia. Tara, pasok na tayo. So ito, uh, elevator na tayo, tapos kabakpak lang tayo. Um, ito yung madalas yung dala ko, nandito yung mga pagkain. Tapos yung extra jacket kasi otong na ngayon, medyo malamit. Okay, papasok na tayo. So magdadrive ako ng mga almost one hour from west going to north. So, Yun, hopefully hindi tayo malate ngayon. Okay guys, so um, yun, nandito tayo sa bahay. So maggagawa na lang tayo ng retrospective um, approach sa video to. So, we'll just do a recap kung anong exactly nangyari kagabi. So, um, obviously, we just want to protect yung pasyente at saka yung hospital na hindi magka-problema sa video to. So, might as well, um, yun, mag-recap na lang tayo kung anong exactly nangyari kagabi sa night shift. So, as you can remember, yun, nag-drive ako papuntang work. Then, um, 12 hours nga yung work. So, nag usually yung work dito sa intensive care, um, 12 hours. So, nag-start ako usually 7 o'clock in the evening until um, half past 7 in the morning for the handover. So, yun. Pakadating natin, um, kuha tayo ng handover sa morning staff. Then, um, mag-rounds na ako ng konti. Depende kasi kung anong function eh. Kasi luckily, kagabi, ano, um, team leader tayo. So, meron lang tayong... Um, Five patients, dalawang ventilated, tatlong hindi. This is a private hospital. Um, meron silang 12 beds. So, luckily, konti lang yung pasyente. Pero, syempre, adequate naman yung staffing natin. So, one is to one. Sa ventilated, tapos sa non-ventilated, one is to two. Tapos, on top ng team leading ko kagabi, meron din akong one patient na, ano, swabby din. Na transferable na naman na sa ward. Anyway, so... Um, recap nga nung nangyari kagabi So, pagkadating natin, kumuha tayo ng handover Then, um, sa start ng shift Siyempre, yung mayroon tayong night register Tsaka intensivist for the whole week Yun yung sistema dito sa Australia So, um, magra-rounds na yung residenting um, doctor So, we call them as an ICU registrar Tapos yung consultant or yung intensivist Usually, um, magtatawag paggabi Tapos, update lang kung ano yung mga nangyayari sa mga pasyente. So, yun, usually work hand-in-hand -hand lang with the ICU registrar. Um, after nila mag-rounds, mag-uusap kami ng, ano, ng ICU reg kung ano yung mga update sa mga pasyente para malaman kung ano yung plano for the rest of the night. Kung bedside ka naman, so 12 hours, obviously hourly monitoring. Tapos, depende kung saan ka nag-work, meron tayong um, sa ibang mga hospital, may big chart pang tinatawag. So, that's a 24-hour big chart, the vital sign monitoring. Pero most of the hospitals in here are, yun na, computer-based. So, lahat nagta-transition na sa computer-based, may kanya-kanyang system. So, um, yun, medyo mas padali na yun kasi ikiklik mo lang every hour kung anong vital signs. Pero, yun, lahat na nga sa computer. Pero, different topic na siguro natin yun. Anyway, so, um, sa 12-hour shift na ginawa ko kagabi, meron kaming, ano, um, entitled kami for 1 hour and 10 to 15 minutes break. Usually, pinapag-tea break namin yung, ano, pinapag-tea break o pag-tea ko yung bedside ng 15 to 20 minutes. Tapos, meron silang extra hour or another 1 hour and 15 minutes para sa rest of the night para mag, uh, para mag, mag break so, kumain, whatever, they can do whatever they want. So, pag nag-break sila, syempre, ano lang, um, cover, cover na lang. So, what I usually do, 
as TL, pinipair ko yung mga bedside and they relieve each other. Tapos, kung TL ako, syempre, ako yung huling mag, ano, mag-rounds. Uh, oh, sorry, huling mag, ano, mag-break. So, yun yung sa break namin. So, ngayon, um, gadgets. So, sabi ko dito sa title ng video, A Glimpse uh, and Tips sa Intensive Care. So, sa gadgets, these are the important gadgets na sa tingin ko dapat nyong ma-familiarize in any intensive care. So, just to give you a background, sorry, hindi ko pa lang mention So, I've been into nursing for ano na, um, 14-15 years. I did start with medical surgical nursing, coronary care sa Pilipinas, then um, intensive care nursing dito for like almost 8 years. So, medyo na, na exposed na tayo sa, sa, um, sa intensive care. Tapos, I work in the public and private casual agency dati. So, medyo um, experience tayo. Nakita na natin kung ano yung meron dito sa New South Wales. Mainly sa Sydney, dito sa Australia. So, gadgets. Balik tayo sa gadgets. In terms of gadgets, number one that you should familiarize with sa ICU is ventilator. So, yung ventilator, sa Pilipinas kasi meron tayong respiratory therapy. So, yun, may mga doctor, pinaplan nila lahat kung paano mag and all. Dito, iba yung approach. As a nurse, it's your job to win your patient kung, kung ready na ba sila o hindi. So, mas may, um, mas may freedom ka ng konti dito to do what you want as long as you've got a good rationale. So, kung mapapakita mo din sa registrar na tama rin yung decision mo na oh, ready na pala yung pasyente ko mag-win so mag-win na ako. Um, yung ventilator, so ilalagay ko dito, yung ventilator is uh, meron tayong Draeger and Puritan Bennett. So, um, yung Draeger and Puritan Bennett, yun yung namit kong usual na brand ng ventilator dito sa Australia. So, um, yun, advantage kung magiging familiar kayo with the ventilators, yung different um, setup, winning, tapos yung sa non-invasive ventilation din. Para pagdating dito, medyo alam nyo na kung anong gagawin nyo sa pasyente. Second, kasi meron ditong iba't ibang klase ng intensive care. Um, meron tayong neuro ICU, general ICU, cardiac ICU. So, sa cardiac ICU, basically kailangan ng pacing. So, kung mapapamilyarize nyo yung sarili nyo sa pacing, mga troubleshooting, um, it takes a lot of experience and skills din naman to get familiarized. Kasi, minsan talaga nakakalito din. So, lalo na yung troubleshooting part. Pero yung basics, at least ma ma-familiarize kayo kung ano yung pinipace, ano yung sinisense, nagtitrigger ba, or hindi. Yun. So, ano yung mga adjustment sa settings, yung mga ganun. So, it will be good kung maka-familiarize nyo yung sarili nyo sa pacing and yung ECG interpretation and reading, syempre. So, yun. that second. Um, third gadget, probably I, I'll recommend that you familiarize with is um, yung CRRT or yung dialysis machine. So, as far as I know, some of the private hospitals in the Philippines are using the Prisma Flex CRRT. Um, so, yun. Um, these are being used for hemodynamically unstable patients kasi um, obviously, hemodynamically unstable nga sila so ayaw mo silang mag-crush pa so dahan-dahan mong kinokorek yung um, electrolytes nila or yung renal function nila so CRRT yung gina, uh, ginagamit mainly CVV, HDF na tinatawag pero um, pwedeng separate topic na natin to just to give you a glimpse CRRT so lalagay ko rin yung picture dito um, so yung CRRT machine na Prisma Flex and um, siguro isa din yung IABP so, pwedeng din nyo pa na-meet yung IABP kasi kung nasa public kayong hospital or small private hospital. Pero sa mga tertiary hospitals, they've been using this one IABP machine. Uh, dito, yung na-encounter ko palang na ginamit 8 years ago is yung CS100 na data scope na machine. Um, so, ilalagay ko rin yung picture dito. Um, so, may idea kayo kung ano yung, ano, yung sinasabi ko. So, yun. At least magkaroon kayo ng concept yung IABP machine. Anyway, so yun yung mga common na gadgets na um, ginagamit dito. Pero, syempre, let's go back to basics. Um, as much as possible, familiarize yourself with the basics. Yung foundation, ECG reading, um, art line, yung mga hemodynamic monitoring, ano ba yung art line, CVP, PAP pressures, um, yun. So, yung mga yun. Yung mga yun. 
advantage din kung nakapag ano kayo BLS or CPR um, ano exposed sa advanced life support yung mga drugs na ginagamit importante rin yun so actually maraming kailangan matutunan pero um, it doesn't apply lang dito sa intensive care okay kasi ito lang yung napag-usapan kasi intensive care tayo pero it applies to any other units kasi dito we treat yung um, um, different areas as specialty Kasi, hindi lang naman yung ICU yung ano, special unit eh. Kundi, um, ano din, yung different na, na units is you guys specialize also. Kasi, um, like for example, orthopedics, specialty din yun. Um, theater, specialty. May mga kaibigan ako dito, psychiatric nurses, so specialty. So, kung magbibigyan ko ng tip sa inyo, pupunto kayo dito, um, masasuggest ko just um, yun uh, iano nyo lang yung craft nyo na learn as much as you can anything that you can um, along the way dyan sa Pilipinas then para pag dumating kayo dito medyo handa tayo so yun tsaka number one yung mindset don't um, feel in fear pag pumunta kayo dito kasi nursing dito is 3 years lang sa Pilipinas is 4 years so theoretical ano advantage tayo clinical siguro yon i-adjust lang yung um, knowledge and approach nyo pero um yun have confidence and um yun tiwala lang sa sa skills nyo so yun yung idea ano pa ba yung tips sa ICU so um tips pa siguro kung pupunta kayo dito mag-work kayo ng ICU kasi depende sa visa nyo kung sponsor kayo working visa or resident so, kung working visa pa lang kayo, definitely, isa pa lang yung job nyo sa isang hospital na nag-hire sa inyo. Pero kung permanent resident ka, you can work anywhere you want. Ang suggestion ko, um, in, kahit mag-work ka, kahit sa unit, work ka muna sa isang unit, get yourself familiarized within the next 6, to, six months to 1 year. Yung maging comfortable ka. And he, he harness mo yung skill mo and yung communication mo into that particular area. After a year or two, um, kung permanent resident ka na, um, yun, pwede ka nang mag-casual or agency. Kasi it will help you financially. Tsaka, it will open your mind then na yung unit mo is hindi lang yun yung tama, yung ginagawa. Kasi, um, may mga ganun taon, may mga ganun personality na they believe that they're the best kasi they work in this intensive care. But, it's not the reality kasi to be honest the more versatile you are the better yun so um if given a chance try to work in different intensive care kasi you learn something the public private in several hospitals you learn something different na pwede mong um gamitin someday if you want to specialize into clinical nursing so yun lang muna um sana nakapagkuha kayo ng konting idea dito sa intensive care um, setup dito sa Australia. Ngayon, um, if you like more of this kind of videos, um, please uh, let me know. Um, put down your comment isun sa, sa ilalim ng, ano, ng video ng to. Um, if you want some other videos na topics, pwede natin siguro i-discuss someday. So, yun. And, uh, ayun. So, um, kung dito ka lang manunood, again, thanks for watching. Um, yun, sana nakatulong ako sa'yo and uh, sana mag-like and subscribe um, if you think um, okay naman yung video nito. So, thanks again and thanks for watching yung Oragon channel. Um, this is Tessor again, signing off. So, okay guys, pa-uwi na tayo from work. Now, obviously, in any nursing naman, as long as you know the principle behind it, anywhere you work, you'll be fine. So again, um, if you like more of this kind of videos about intensive care or anything about nursing, uh, please write down your comment um, below the video to, so that uh, we can consider or we can make a blog about that one. So again, um, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Um, this is Nessor again from Oragon Channel and um, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.